Okay, we're guessing we're gonna count down yeah, now. We're okay, gonna okay. count down. Players ready? Three, Three two, two, one, Tetris! And again, uh, the, the, we've seen what Eric can do in terms of survivability. Oh yeah. But you know what? Dog is right there too. This is going to be such a match. But again, weird pieces to start out. Kind of a lot of S's and Z's to start out. Eric does have the yeah. ability to fix his screen with a T piece, but Burns that T and, piece is yeah. not coming. Gets it. Oh, misses oh. the T spin. So both players having to deal with some burns and some awkward placements early on. We'll see how that plays out as they progress through the early part of level 18 here. Boom, Tetris for Dog. Do you see Eric is still trying to burn through there. He's gonna go for the double over here. But that's Lisa's is gonna open up. Actually, we've seen him do this a lot during the qualifies. Yeah, play off row, go three for the there. row three there. Mm -hmm. yep. And just needs the long bar to complete that. And boom, Tetris for Eric. Every time I eat one of these gummies, there's just so much juice. <laughs> like I'm sitting here trying to talk and it's hard. I'm gonna quote you on that one, James. Yeah. <laughs> 20% juice, <laughs> but 83% Tetris rate for Dog now. Early on, banging down another Tetris, 85% Tetris rate now. And Eric down Tetris ready, maintaining column or row three, more like. And boom, dirty, dirty Tetris for Eric. Yep, and now he's gonna keep maintaining that because, you know, he knows when you're going up against a player like Dog. Yeah. You, know, you have to be aggressive. now. However, of course, as we've mentioned many, many times already, Eric is the you know, record holder for longest surviving at uh, level 141. There can be a part of him that, you know, he knows that if he just can survive long enough, he might be able to outlast just about anybody, even a player like Dog. Yeah, that's definitely something. I mean, it's always kind of intimidating to me if you go against a player that can do that. But right, Dog being two-time Classic Tetris World Champion, reigning Classic Tetris World Champion. So both these players really with amazing status, amazing achievements. This match is gonna be one for the ages. Dog finally getting himself Tetris ready over there on the side, but Ooh. A, a little bit of awkward Eric developing pieces, a but... spire with a mandatory tux here. Yeah, let's see how he fixes this. It shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. And there we go. Beautifully fixed. No problem. Nice. Nice adjustments by Eric there. Keeping it clean. But where's that long piece again? We're heading into another drought here. Yeah. Eric having to do some burns. Just some skims off the top. Nothing major. And boom, Tetris for Eric. Just uh, really showing good movement on the pieces to be able to get them into places for efficient solves. That's what you want to see. And boom, Tetris for Eric. Meanwhile, Dog just playing clean, keeping the board open all the time. Boom, Tetris for Dog. 36,000 point lead up by a Tetris. You see right now, Dog, 66% Tetris rate. Eric at 58%. As we mentioned, 60% was always the max out pace, but again, with both of these players here and how efficient they are at the rolling, that that all kind of goes out the window. Yeah. Just uh, the meta is going to become how consistent can you be surviving post-29, at least with the current rule set. And Eric got himself set up for a Tetris once again. And again, Eric with 14 max outs during quals, 13 max outs for Dog, and like I said, if not for a 35-piece eyepiece drought, would have had 14 as well. We almost had three players with 14 max outs during quals. Yeah, and our top four are the players that got, are the two players that got the 13s and the two players that got the 14s. So yep. there's just this level of skill there that you cannot deny being able to max out and being able to survive just uh, facilitating uh, being in the top four and being at that, yeah, I like would say, I said, elite level of skill. During qualifying rounds between our top four, 54 max outs between just four players. Like, 
years ago, we probably yeah. didn't get 54 max When you total, say that you number, know? I just think you're talking about fan fiction from some, like, you know, <laughs> some weird uh, story, but it's reality now here in 2022. So look at this. They are literally neck and neck here. Look at these scores between the two players. Almost the exact same Tetris rates as well. Oh, Eric building up a little bit of an awkward stack here. Oh, but that O piece is going to be very nice to fill oh, it out, but a missed drop right a, there. Yeah, a little bit of a hole developing there. Eric will probably burn it off later. So Dog with a better looking field now. It's evening it up. We are neck and neck again. And Dog hitting transition. 70% yep. Tetris rate. Both players in transition. Eric exposes the hole over there and is going to be able to get through there. But it's still a little bit of an awkward stack, but just the right pieces. And look at this. Oh, what a clean play field for him. Dog, however, has not had very much uh, trouble so far and is playing still yeah. so cleanly, so solidly. Yeah, Dog looking really good here. Just uh, <laughs> unleashed as usual. Just. Dog doing dog things, I mean, banging down another Tetris. Honestly, the, the way that Dog plays a lot of those last second micro adjustments and, and, and just the, the placement of the pieces reminds me so much of when I used to watch, you know, Jonas play yeah. all the time. He had, Jonas always had some of the best last second uh, micro adjustments at the end and Dog is just like right there. Ooh. So Eric with a slight hang there with that box. So Dog looking a bit more accurate here as we head towards level 29. And again, one Tetris lead. You know, one of these situations is when this kind of happens, it can create like a panic situation. Like, oh shoot, I'm losing my points with Tetris rate and everything. But if you're Eric and you're like, you know what? <laughs> I'll just have to play to level 141, you know, no problem. But going into that, you know, Dog not making any, you know, major placement mistakes, you're going to need that accuracy on 29 more than ever. Mm -hmm. So that's a confidence thing. If Eric's making more misdrops now, if that affects going into 29, that's going to be fatal. So you do need to have accuracy throughout and not just being able to survive past 29 in general. Dog up by 35,000 points still. It's been pretty much this level of lead for the majority of this round. As we pass level 26, Dog within three Tetrises of maxing. Yeah, again, we could potentially get almost a double level 26 max out like we did earlier in this tournament. Looks like it's going to be perhaps a double level 27 max out. Yeah, Eric getting closer in score now. Dog. A Tetris and change away from maxing. Okay, get, yep. gets and the max. There it is, a, a double, double max. max out. Eric on 28. 10 lines away from second transition slash kill screen. Was it, I, was it the Joseph Green Tea match was our first double max out, I think it was? Yeah. Yeah, and now it's just like it's, it's happening common. constantly. <laughs> Before we were looking forward to when it happened, and now it's just uh, <laughs> par for the course. And Eric hitting level 29 oh. at 112,000, 1,133,000 points. And the decisions. Very that... neck and neck here. Oh, wow, dog. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh. This dog wanting to resolve that right side with the log, but there it is! Gets it in there, wants to burn back down. Gets it over to the left, that was key. Dude, I okay. can't breathe watching these guys play. Oh! Dog oh, needing to get that oh. log bar over to the right. Can you do it? Okay, opts to burn down from the top. Oh, oh. oh and that's oh. not going to be survivable. That's and a very the chase down, the chase down. lead. Only needs 4,000 points. Actually, 1, just 1,000 now. There it and is. Eric, Eric takes, takes game number one. And there you go. Again, if you're Eric, you know your survivability skills is unlike any other. It is such 
a, a huge factor in trying to remain calm in these matches. We remember how much Joseph kind of almost forced Jonas to play more aggressive than Jonas was used to playing. And I feel like that might even be affecting a, a player like Dog right now, you know, thinking, I can't just outlast this guy here. But the thing, if you notice, once Eric hits 29, there's only one or two rows built up, and Eric yep. is just constantly slamming down the pieces, creating line clears to keep that field safe. And anybody who wants to survive past 29 needs to learn that as an innate skill like Eric has. Right, and again, okay. don't forget, Dog, two-time champion uh, in a row here, and okay. they're ready to go. Okay, they're ready to go. We're gonna count this down. Three, Three two, one, Tetris! Tetris! And yes, like I mentioned, two-time current reigning champion is Dog, and so he's still the one to beat at this point. And right now, Dog is actually tied with Joseph Saley for number, uh, you know, second number of world championship wins. So definitely would like to get a third there and uh, sort of like stake his place right beneath Jonas Neubauer as having multiple mm -hmm. world championship titles. Also, if you are watching, Joseph, we all miss you and love you very much. So hope you Definitely. are enjoying some Tetris with the rest of us. Hopefully, Joseph can come here next year just to qualify. Yeah. And that's the thing. If I remember correctly, in the grand finals between uh, Dog and his brother, uh, I think Pixel Andy took the first game, and then Dog was able to win uh, all of them afterwards, if I'm not mistaken. But again, that just means that Dog is a person who knows how to play under pressure, not going to be too shaken by going down that first game. Oh, just the unfortunate little bit of an uh, S burst, and now, oof. Actually, the two oh, eyepieces in a row are going to help Eric out a lot. Mm -hmm. Eric just creating a tuck there. Let's see what piece gets used. Bangs down another Tetris. Yeah, now <laughs> it looks like Eric is almost ST stacking right now. <laughs> yeah, that formation used a lot in modern. And in fact, it, it turns out that Eric was the last player that Jonas defeated uh, in CTWC. And so we have oh. a lot of a uh, lot of uh, history here. Yeah, but, interesting. I didn't uh, didn't have that at the top of my memory, yeah. but now I, now I know. Shout outs to Mr. Bidwell over here. Distributing the online facts. <laughs> Wow, setting up the vits like that. In general, when you play Tetris, you know, you don't want to have the center well, you want to have the right well, but the best one is the bid well. That's what you want <laughs> in your corner. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Bidwell, another pillar of our community. Scores are Ooh, neck and neck. It. Really close game here. Both fields just completely clean, and both players taking those Tetrises when the long bars come. Rain right and there. Tetris is here. You know, the weather has been really great here in Portland, Oregon, <laughs> but today, Tetris is raining down on your screen. <laughs> Yeah, and once again, shout outs to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, our home for the CTWC for so long. It feels so right just to be back here again. That's right. It's good to just uh, be in this atmosphere and to see so many people enjoying uh, retro games and especially, you know, classic Tetris. Uh, mm. A lot of players just, uh, you know, I met a lot of people who this is their first live event and uh, they're so happy to be here. They would say that, okay, well, they're going to save up, come to this one, and that's going to be it. But now they want to come every single year. And that's what you want to hear. And you know what the strategy is? Every year that you come here, bring somebody else. Because, you know, if we can keep exposing more and more people to this amazing Tetris action, you know, that's how we continue to grow. Yeah, I'm starting to even see just more people coming just to be a spectator. And that's mm -hmm. amazing. And what Joseph did to usher in this new generation of players has been so pivotal, pivotal to the scene. Absolutely. 
you have to have a good community leader. You have to have someone who uh, sort of sets good standards and uh, is an inspiration to, you know, all sorts of people. So, uh, yeah, Joseph doing a great job for the younger generations there. Yeah, honestly, you know, the, the Jonas, Joseph, both of them great representatives of the scene. And honestly, you know, I feel like Dog is right there as yeah, well. Absolutely. Despite his age, he's just, he's so mature and so, you know, very uh, aware and understanding of the community and, and everything this means to everybody. Definitely in agreement there. Dog has been a great representative and, you know, that's why we have even more generations of players upcoming. <laughs> Didn't even notice that 380 point difference between the two players. That's how neck and neck this is. Wow, Ooh, look we at got that formation by Eric. <laughs> Floating block there. Don't get to see that too often. Oh, nice adjustment right there just to get that burn on the side. And look at this. And scores are neck and neck once again. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Eric is uh, about two Tetrises ahead, two eight lines ahead. So. Yeah, hits transition now at 562,000 points. Good scores up on the board. And now the transition for Dog. Yep, both players still in great shape. No big digs. And again, Dog, I, the way that I see him playing, like I feel like sometimes he might have gone for a couple of nice little burns there, but he is playing very aggressive right now. And like I said, I feel like a lot of that is brought upon by, you know, knowing that Eric is the opponent. And that's what happens when players keep pushing each other. You know, you, you, you force the aggressive play from your opponents. Yeah, we've seen that just throughout history, but now taken to a whole new level. And we saw it before with, you know, aggressiveness with Das, and now, you know, with the post-kill screen play. Got the placement of the pieces nicely done by Eric. He had a couple Ooh, of really playing bad up high. Pieces. Oh, boy. But that little bit of that burning has dropped him down to a 70% uh, Tetris rate. And it's scary to say how the, the, the tone in my voice sounds like it's disappointing, you know, 70%. But it's just it might not be enough these days. Ooh, oh, Eric boy. playing really aggressive here. Really holding out. Oh, Ooh, man, look boom, at that. Tetris for Eric. And yeah, and boom, dog, Tetris for Eric. And Dog in an unfortunate position, but he is going for Aggressive. a center oh. world Tetris again. Just place that T just slightly, waiting for the long bar. Boom, boom. Tetris for Dog. Gets that center well and nicely <laughs> sets up. A triple to clean through that. And there we go. Perfect pieces yep, dog to clean get again. him a, a clean neutral board. And the dog has been cleaned, and boom, Tetris for dog. We are seeing some just amazing high-level play decisions on where to place these pieces yeah. otherworldly by these players. It's just fun to watch the placement pieces as they happen. <laughs> it's either just masters of, uh, you know, they'll see a piece combination and put them somewhere you might not think of, but mm -hmm. it all works out. And that's the beauty of Tetris. So many of us have played this game that we, when we watch these players and they drop the piece in an unexpected oh, place. Eric's left side is going to be critical and smartly burns it down to make it manageable. No problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah, it's that oh. clutch decision making, that instinct, building oh, a spire. Yep. But again, the drought right now is just is is painful for Eric. So you know what you're seeing? That it speaks. Oh, double max. Wow. We're just so focused on their survival that, yeah, the scores are just keep going up and up. And we hit a double max out, you know, at level 27, level 28. So uh, level 29 kill screen is coming. And Eric? Uh, Eric is up higher than you. Yeah. Wow. Eric is just gets clean like that. Wow. Tetris Eric. is on. He was having so much trouble clearing that one hole that was there for so long, but managed to clear it. Not only did he clear it, but he did it with a Tetris. Yeah, and just so much confidence and experience. 
in that speed. Now, this is, this is where it comes down right now yep. because Eric is behind by quite a bit. The only way he can win this is by survivability right now. So for Dog, Dog really has to make sure he puts the pressure on Eric as much as possible. Yeah, Dog wants to survive as long as possible here to ensure that win. Oh! And... You could tell from Eric stacking that the priority is always burning back down. And Dog's doing a great job of that as well. Yep, you want to see those good placements and flat burns. Dog's in the position you want to be in, near the floor and surviving with the point lead. Eric doing a great job of staying alive as well, keeping that, oh keeping the pieces manageable. They are both just surviving here. And again, I can't even explain to you how difficult this has to do. Okay, okay. Can oh, dog, dog dig through this? No, oh, it's not gonna happen. 40,000 point chase down. And again, this is Eric. I feel like this is his specialty, a triple. Yeah. And yeah, just keeping it close to the bottom. Eric is so good at keeping this love post 29 kill screen play non-lethal. Double. Oh. The crowd is counting it down here. Six, four, four three, three, one. one. And there it is, Eric. <laughs> and Eric takes the second round. Dog now on the ropes Ooh. for, geez. Dog's tournament life on the line here. Needs to win this round to stay in the match and remain the reigning classic Tetris world champion. But shout outs to Eric as well, knowing that you're in the chase down and hearing this audience and getting that extra bit of pressure. You have to just tune everything out of your mind and just focus on the game. And listening to the audience chant, sounds like we don't know how to count down when we're from the people outside, but you know. It looks like the players are already ready. Yep, we're, we're speaking of see. countdown. And so we're gonna do it now. Three, Three two, one, Tetris! So yeah, Eric once again demonstrating that survival after 29 has really been the key to this 2022 championship. And I gotta say, after that last match, you saw the emotion from Dog as well. Feeling a little bit of that pressure now. Obviously he saw his brother go down to Fractal earlier. Wants to make sure that at least one of them gets to this grand finals. Yeah, it's really interesting how the four players in the top four are you know, the rivals, but just kind of mm -hmm. like crossed over. And uh, maybe that's given, you know, Eric a little bit more motivation to to see, see his rival at the end. And uh... well, remember, we interviewed them after they played their qualifying matches and they said, yeah, they all play each they, other. Yeah, that they because they were playing next to each other yeah. during the qualifiers that they almost kind of inspired each other to those 14 max outs. Yeah. And same for the 13 with Dog and Andy. Mm -hmm. So interesting dynamic there but yeah actually just all four of these players are in this elite tier of gameplay and uh what they're able to do with the game hmm. dog needs to figure out a way to get into that column nine over there let's see if he goes for the single burns or is he going for the double eyepiece he's going for the double eyepiece again yep playing a Ooh, little nice bit aggressive. adjustment there saw the long bar and rotated that J. Zero point differential for a moment there. But Eric's gonna do a few burns there. Dog's gonna bang down the Tetris. Okay, Dog with the expected tuck there, burns off the double. And that's a triple with the long bar there. Let's see if Dog plays off of row two there. Looks like that may be the case. And bangs down to Tetris. Boom, Tetris for Dog. Meanwhile, Eric with some burn, so Dog up to a 40,000 point lead now. So Eric doing a few more burns here. And gets Tetris ready. 
Okay, let's see if... Okay, Eric fills in the middle and is Tetris ready once again, but Dog bang down another Tetris, gets up to a 70,000 point lead early, well, about halfway to transition. And boom, boom Tetris, Tetris for Eric. Tetris for Eric. And a boom Tetris for Eric again. But at a 47% Tetris rate right now, Dog maintaining that 67%. So yeah, dog being a little bit more, a little bit more consistent leading up to 29, but Eric definitely surviving longer than anyone else. And like we said, the way that the game is played now, it might not, the efficiency isn't the only factor anymore. Before, you know, it was very clear in all the past years, we would be calling out the Tetris rate the majority of the time, because mm -hmm. that was the main factor. But at this point, it's, it's it's only one of the factors. Yeah, I think you still need both. You need survivability, especially mm -hmm. past 29, and the ability to score consistently leading up there. Yeah, because you don't want to be chasing down with singles if you're like 300,000 points behind. Oh yeah, so. and right. All it takes is one mistake and it's all over. So being able to survive is no guarantee if the game all of a sudden droughts you or you're forced into a bad P sequence. So Dog still maintaining that 71% Tetris rate, has turned himself into double line bar reliant. So gonna go for a little bit of burns and oh my gosh, Eric what? is playing so high up. Where's that long bar? That long bar is not showing up, but he's okay. And boom, Tetris for Eric. And uh, Dog now building on top, has a left well set up, but has some burns to do before accessing it. Makes a good adjustment there. Let's see what happens here with these pieces. Yeah, okay, definitely it looks like he's some set interesting up. decisions here by Dog. I mean, he's set up now for that Tetris, yep. but took a few burns to get there. Yeah, it's actually doing probably more burns, but maybe anticipates a drought and playing it safe here. And Dog with a little bit of a problem with holes on either side of the yeah, board. Yeah, Dog not really committing to a Tetris there. Opts to take the burns, and it's going to allow Eric to take lead now. All right, and so Dog... Boom, Tetris for Eric. With all that cleaning from Dog, he's down to 55%, with Eric transitioning at 60%. So both of them, I mean, uh, Dog is on the precipice of max out pace. But Eric right now at the 62% is at max out pace still. Yeah, Eric was able to catch up in that last sequence. 87,000 point lead now. Uh, is ahead by a few lines, but definitely the less aggressive play from Dog there making the difference in the score. <laughs> and even that makes such a difference even now. But here we are in post 19 now, so points being worth more. Dog, as we know, becomes unleashed post-19, so the complexion of the match has the potential to change for sure. Right, but unfortunately for Dog right now, Eric kind of becomes unleashed post-29. Right. And that's, you know, that's something that's, uh... That's, that's something that's so intimidating and everybody's afraid of because how do you beat someone who can possibly live forever? Oh, I love that placement by Eric right there. So clean to be able to burn through that so fast. And here we go. Dog is now Tetris ready as well. Oh, Dog uh -oh. creating some holes there. Oh. Nice placement there. Mm -hmm. That adjustment to get the burn efficiently. Good solves. Yep, and we'll be out, out of there with the perfectly. next piece. There yep. you go. Tetris ready again, but in the middle of a drought, unfortunately. And yeah, Eric building on the lead with that Tetris. Now 146,000 points ahead. 26. Oh, there we go. Finally, it was a 26-piece drought. Oh, beautiful from Dong. That was so beautiful. Look at that play. It got so smart. Eric is on fire right now, banging down back-to-back -back Tetrises. 
the lead growing, 177,000 points now. Dog battling back the deficit with that Tetris, now down to 146k, but Dog's got some catching up to do. Oh, jeez. Wow, wow Eric, Eric building up so high. so risky. But yeah, Eric with the confidence on the placement and just content to play so dangerously close to the top and bang down multiple Tetrises, getting the job done. Already just a Tetris and change away from maxing out on level 27. Okay, Eric just a few, like a line clear or two away from him. A max out here. But you can see right now, he is at 57%. He's 150,000 points behind Eric. He's gone into the level 29 okay, max phase out for at the Eric. lead. For most of the time, he's always yeah. been in the lead every single time. But Every other game, Dog has been in the lead, but not on this one. So we will see what happens. Can Dog turn the tables and actually survive longer than Eric to catch up and score? Eric now hitting kill screen. 1,080,000 points. 200,000 points ahead. One of the biggest leads we've seen in the entire top eight thus far. Yeah, Eric again, just here on this uh, thrill screen right now, just going as long as he can, trying to survive. And like I said, the calmness at which he can play at this level is... Yeah, Dog <sighs> hits 29 with a tet well, Tetris at triple and uh, is now close to the bottom. This is where you want to be to survive. And this is a battle of survival now as both players on 29. Eric looking to sweep and Dog battling to stay in. Must win this round to stay in the match. Doing a great job of surviving now. Can you imagine? I mean, it would be almost, no one would uh, believe. Oh my goodness, set up for a Tetris for a moment there. Nobody okay. would believe you if they told you that Dog could potentially be swept out of the tournament. Oh, here we go. Needs the long bar. No, Get he's the gonna triple. take the triple. Take the triple. He's gonna try to stay alive, and there we go. Double max, max out. out for Dog. Eric at 1.1 now. Some holes in the stack, but Eric's so consistent at drilling back down, no matter what the situation, even post 29. I remember we talked about this too, you know, during calls, you know, like, you know, remember we saw Thatchy, after he would uh, max out, Ooh, he would keep playing play for the dang. practice, yeah, you know, yeah. and this to is one of the reasons why. Practice. Oh, okay. Oh, that. he needs a long bar, he needs a long bar, got okay. it! Get, smartly burns it down, gets it all the way over to the left for the next one, that's what you need to do. So Dog just showing the survival skills as well, can hang with Eric here in post 29 speeds. Hey, Eric just banged down Let's singles. Go! If you notice, the floor is so visible when Eric is burning lines at the bottom. And yeah, and the lead has not shrunk. It's been about 137 okay, for Eric. quite some time now. But Eric's screen is filling up a little bit. Yeah, Can he burn a little back little down? More than you're used to seeing from Eric. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! We just saw a perfect clear from Eric. A 29, wow. Oh. Dog looking so good here. This is the longest we've seen anyone survive against Eric, at least in this top eight, so. And we are at 332 lines, 1.2 million for Eric. And, and again, you're sitting here at level 320 and you're still down by 100,000 points right now, but he is catching up little by little. Uh -oh. Okay, Dog with some bolts in the stack, needs a long bar, would love to fill that middle. Oh. 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 Oh, no. Okay. T kind of get okay. moving in this place there. Needs to drill back oh. down somehow. And isn't That's able to hold on. Eric completes the sweep and, and eliminates the two-time world champion, Dog playing Tetris, and will advance. But wow, what a run by Dog. Abs Ties with Joseph Staley as two world championships in a row. Eric, probably being one of the best rollers that we have right now, has taken, and again, this isn't a sweep. Dog was taken out on a sweep, but again, back-to-back -back champion, Dog plays Tetris. Round of applause for Dog. Dog. Dog being an amazing player, revolutionizing the game. And, and like excellent, I said, just uh, such a great member of the community yes, too. And uh, exactly. uh, we love having Dog as our champion. Wow, James and Chris, what a tremendous final four that we just saw, the semifinal there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please. It is a two-time champion, Dog. Come on, everybody, stand up.
the champ that helped carry the last two years online to keep this sport viable. One more time, please. Dog, courageous effort again. We, we knew coming in, Eric was gonna be very tough. That last game, tell us your thoughts, your feelings, what's going on? Yeah, it's just, it's such a different experience in CTWC, you know. The, the, the nerves just, just get to you, and, that, and I feel like that's one advantage that Eric has. Just, he's just so good at staying composed, and that's really, that's honestly such a big reason why he's one of the best players now. Most well, certainly, but you know what? You still remain one of the best players. I mentioned you've carried the torch for the last two years. You've had the trophy. It's time now that the next group, Eric, Fractal, they're going to do it. Do you have any encouraging words for them as they go into this final? Um, just Eric Fractal, uh, I, <laughs> I know it's going to be an insane match. I have no idea who's going to win because these two players are like, these two players, they're just so consistent at staying alive. So I think that it's, it's going to be such an amazing match. So Eric and Fractal, good luck to both of you. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a two-time world champion. Dog watching Tetris again. Great ambassador as he continues on. Dog, we love you, buddy. We can make a mistake, too. That guy is awesome as well. Dog playing Tetris. Yes, you're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we have the finalist. It's here, it's Eric ICX. Eric, man, here's the crowd. The crowd is rooting for you. Oh, I can tell. There you go. Eric, clearly the two-time champion dog, one of the toughest players in the world to play. What got you through these uh, last three games? Uh, honestly, throughout all the tournament, my number one goal has just been survival. Like, If you cannot last your opponent, then you can Definitely win if you just can just last long enough because everybody makes mistakes eventually. So certainly you've shown that your gameplay, the uh, sustainability, lasting long enough has gotten you to this point. We know Fractal can do the same thing. What kind of strategy do you have going in that might be able to last longer? Uh, no particular strategy. Pretty much just doing exactly what I did, trying to stay, stay alive as long as possible. Now, Eric, when you got into Classic Tetris, did you ever imagine that you'd be standing here with a room full of fanatics that are rooting for you to get one of these beautiful trophies? Obviously, the one for the gold. Was that ever in your sights? Heck no. <laughs> Seriously. I started watching, I think it was the CCWC 2017 finals. I thought that match was pretty insane. I didn't think I'd be standing here, ever. I, I was just hoping I'd be able to come down here at least once. But, and yeah, I achieved that goal, so. <laughs> so why not try to achieve one more, correct? Ladies and gentlemen, it is Eric ICX, the finalist for CTWC 2022. James, Chris, back to you. The stage has been set. Like the two 14 maxers are our top two. Yeah, and again, just as a reminder to everyone, if you've seen in the past, okay. the, the trophy has always yeah, been a okay. T piece, right? The te for, you know, for Tetris and such. But now, of course, the modern trophy, the J piece, to basically, you know, uh, give props to Jonas. The, right. The, exactly. So, the J you know, Shout out to everybody for changing that to the JPs for in honor of Joe's Jonas, who has literally been our greatest ambassador for Classic Tetris. Yeah, Jonas really setting the tone uh, for our community and for uh, bringing together uh, everything that makes what we do special. But actually, we're going to do one more interview over here. So let's throw it back to Kingsman real quick. All right. Thanks, guys, and I have a very special guest here. So for those of you that might remember, if you were here in 2019, there was an absolutely huge fan that was in the crowd yelling booms all day long. So I have with me the lovely little Anastasia. How you doing, honey? Uh, good. I'm sure we're doing good. Are you having a great time here? Yes. Absolutely. So you came in 2019, you got to see all that. Who was your favorite player back then? Um, Quaid. Oh, of course, yes. You are most certainly in the majority of that. They is a fan favorite. Here we are now, three years later. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 
another member of the TWO, baby, you know it. So here we are three years later. Have you been a fan? Are you watching on, on the streams while you've been watching the last few championships? Um, uh, not really, no. Well, that might be fair. Maybe, maybe your parents are like, oh, we'll get what to it later. So here we are now, you're live again. Do you have a new favorite player that's here now? Maybe Fractal or Eric? Which one do you think might be the winner? Um, I don't know. They're both good. Well, which one? I mean, maybe, maybe Fractal, he's got that cute little penguin, or Eric has got a nice shark, too. Which one would you need to prefer, prefer penguins or sharks? Um, both. You like both. <laughs> so there you go, the winner of CTWC 22. It'll be a tie. They're going to share the trophy here. <laughs> Anastasia, we love your enthusiasm. Are you going to be booming it up here in the final for us? Uh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anastasia, young fan that will be supporting CTWC throughout her life. I, I can't believe it. Thank you so much for joining us. James, Chris, we got a lifer. That's what you love to see, just proving that classic Tetris can be enjoyed by anyone, any age, any level of skill, even if you just want to come out here and do the <laughs> booms. Yep. That was like my favorite moment from and I, that year. I feel like we got a good future politician here, you know? Like, which way, who do you want to win? Both. Both. Okay, there we, we all go. win. But that is actually <laughs> accurate because no matter what the outcome is, all of us who are watching, all of us who are fans of competitive Tetris, we all win with this wonderful show and the great spirit of competition that we have with us now. Yeah, and obviously the grand final's coming up here, but before we get to that, one last thing to shout out here, of course, is the Honda Fan Cup. Yes, the Honda Fan Cup, uh, which uh, Sharky and I have been commentating the previous two weeks. Is, uh, some of it's going on now. Uh, we can't watch it because we're doing this all here. Uh, <laughs> people who joined this week probably have the best chance to win because, you know, the big cats are playing here, you know, at CTWC. But next week, we're going to be having the, the last week of of, uh, the qualifiers for that and you can win a cash prize there nice. uh, as long as you live in North America and are 18 years of age or over which is actually improving the odds once again because you don't have to face you know our demographic of killer teenage players now <laughs> you can call it the honda cup you know for seniors or whatever you want but it's just a great opportunity for people to be able to play tetris effect connected and play in a competition with money on the line and stakes that are high